Hello. In this video, we are going to look at detailed graphs of the wave function solutions for the harmonic oscillator problem in quantum mechanics. Here we see the n equals zero solution, the ground state for the harmonic oscillator. The wave function is symmetric around x equals zero which corresponds to the equilibrium bond length. So we see that in the n equals 1 state, the particle tends to stay roughly around its equilibrium position. This is the wave function solution for n equals 1. And we notice that this wave function has a node at x equals 0. Therefore, this particle will never be found at the equilibrium bond position. Here we have the n equals 2 state. You notice that it has two nodes, one positive x, one negative x meaning slightly greater than the equilibrium bond length and one shorter than the equilibrium bond length. We also began to notice the pattern that for the quantum harmonic oscillator, the number of nodes is equal to the quantum number n. Here we see displayed on one graph the wave functions corresponding to the four lowest energy states of the quantum harmonic oscillator n equals 0 through n equals 3. We notice that the curvature of the wave functions increases as n increases, which is to be expected since the curvature is linked to the kinetic energy of the particles. And the higher the state of vibration, the more quickly the particles will be moving. Here is the probability density psi star psi for the n equals zero ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. We note that the particle overwhelmingly spends its time right around x equals zero, which is the equilibrium bond distance. For n equals 1, this is the probability density. Note that the n equals 1 state has a node at x equals 0, which means that it is forbidden to actually be at the equilibrium bond distance, and it spends its time both short of the equilibrium bond length at negative x and greater than the equilibrium bond length at positive x. For the n equals 2 state, we have the probability density distribution shown here. Note that the distribution has two nodes, one at positive x and one at negative x, but the highest probability of finding the particle is around x equals 0, the equilibrium bond length. Here we have the probability density distribution for the n equals 3 state of the harmonic oscillator. Note that it, like the other odd numbered state n equals 1, has a node precisely at x equals 0, the equilibrium bond length. It also has two additional nodes since the number of nodes is equal to the quantum number n for the harmonic oscillator. It is a postulate of quantum mechanics that eigenfunctions of an operator with different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. Here we see in blue the n equals 0 state and in red the n equals 1 state for the quantum harmonic oscillator. Since they are eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues, we know that they must be orthogonal. 
the graph also displays in black the product psi 1 star psi 0. For clarity, let us first remove the n equal 0 curve from the graph. Then we remove the n equals 1 curve from the graph, leaving just psi 1 star psi 0. Here, the area under the curve psi 1 star psi is shaded in gray. So this corresponds to the integral of psi 1 star psi 0. The integral interprets areas above the x-axis as positive and areas below the x-axis as negative. Therefore, we have shaded the positive area region as dark gray and the negative area region as light gray. Notice that the shapes and areas of the two regions appear to be identical in size, therefore canceling out the equal zero. If we copy and cut out the positive area region and rotate it, we can exactly overlay it over the negative area region, showing that the magnitudes of the areas are absolutely identical. And since one is positive and the other is negative, they cancel out to equal exactly zero, thereby proving that psi one and psi zero really are orthogonal to each other. Here, the wave function solution for the n equals 1 state is displayed in red. The wave function solution for the n equals 2 state is displayed in red. Since these are two eigenfunctions with different eigenvalues, they must be orthogonal. The product psi 2 star psi 1 is displayed in black. First, for clarity, we remove the curve for the n equals 1 state. Then we remove the curve for the n equals 2 state, leaving just psi 2 star psi 1 shown in black. Since the definite integral interprets areas above the x-axis as positive and areas below the x-axis as negative, we have shaded two regions in gray. The one region is shaded dark gray because it is a positive area, and the other region is shaded gray because it is a negative area. Note that the two areas seem similar in shape and in total area. Here again, we have shaded two more similarly shaped regions. One on the right hand side, a dark gray, because it is a positive region above the x-axis. And we have colored the other region light gray, since it is a negative area being below the x-axis. We can actually cut out the rightmost dark gray region, rotate it, and pull it over to the side to show that it corresponds exactly in shape and size to the leftmost light gray region that sits exactly below it. Here we do exactly the same thing for the rightmost negative region in light gray. We cut it out, we rotate it, and we place it directly below the corresponding dark gray region. And we know it is exactly the same size and shape, but of opposite area, so that the two dark regions at top 
and the two light gray regions below it exactly cancel, thereby demonstrating that the integral actually is zero. I thank you for your attention. Have a good one.